Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Everything in bloom on the 8th, on the 9th. <laughs> it happens. Um, it was my day off yesterday. So we're starting in the kitchen. The clip before this one was literally, as I turned the camera on to film this Phalaenopsis, one of the long-tailed tits came on the bird feeder. So I managed to capture that. There's a flock of them. It'll be a family group. I think there's either seven or eight. And when they're all there together, it's absolutely marvellous watching them. But that was just, um, they've been and gone, and that one just sort of dropped back just as I turned the camera on. So uh, anyway, on to the grow room. Okay, so we're, we're doing buds and spikes and things now as part of the um, everything in bloom. So um, there's more to see, but <laughs> there's, no, there's no more colour than there would have been anyway. It's just more like things to come, if you know what I mean. But um, people seem to appreciate it. Now, this wonky pot here that's basically turned over at an angle. It's the only way I can get that pot to stand up because the nobly that's inside it is so big and clumsy. But it does have some buds. There's a couple near the top of that cane um, and there's a nubbin on that joint there as well. So we will get some blooms on that again soon. That is, I believe, the sweet pink, pinky momoko. Uh, I'll be doing pop-ups for the name, so uh, I'll just leave it at that. That's the easiest way to do it, quite honestly. And then this nobly here, again, we've got buds pushing on quite well here. Got buds on this old cane here, old leafless cane. Um, this is nearly a leafless cane, <laughs> not quite, but we've got buds here. Buds starting to separate now, so uh, this gets watered a bit more often and gets a bit of feed when I think about it. Um, the buds are pushing away from the cane, so that's a good time to start um, pushing the energy back into the plant. Um, and my little epidendrum looks like it's going to recover finally. And we do have a spike starting on the top of this one, so we will get those lovely orange blooms. This one has been in a bad state for some time, but it, it seems to be growing a bit better now. Um, we'll see what happens, but at least we've got a spike. We will get some blooms down the line now. Um, nothing much else on there. These two plants effectively are the same one but one's a dark form and one's a light form. Now, these spikes are not gonna produce many blooms by the looks of it. I mean, that one looks like three, possibly four, and the same again on this one. But um, this, these didn't grow properly. These leaves are too big, too long and too floppy. Now, there's several reasons that could be. Too much food, these are very, very weak feeders, um, odontoglossum types or not enough light and the, the you know the leaves were struggling to get to the light that's probably a combination of the two but difficult to tell all I can do is perhaps put them in a more light you know a better position for the coming year <coughs> <coughs> excuse me I've still got the croaks um, the Restrepias, two of them are in bloom. Oh, I wish I hadn't got down here because I'm gonna have to get up now. Um, this one tucked away in there. Um, I doubt if I'll be able to focus on that because the light is so poor. You know, it's really in the shadows, this one at the moment, but um, we'll see how close we can get. Something like that. So there's that one in bloom, it's just a single bloom on that one, but these, as Restrepia blooms go, these are large. Oh. And then coming round here, this, this one here has actually got several blooms on the go at the moment. And um, in better light, we should be able to get a bit closer to this one. Something like that. It is very difficult handheld with this camera, but... Um, Anyway, a lovely deep colour um, on that one. So those are the two Restrepias that have got some blooms on out of the six. Uh, coming up here, we've got nothing, no spikes or buds showing up here yet. Or down here for that matter. Until we get down to the Cymbidium. Now this is the, the one that I look after for Hannah. 
that looks like it's virused. Um, several people have said possibly not, just dramatically um, disturbed, basically a repot, um, various other things. But um, what we do have is two lovely spikes coming on. Now, they could be the telltale sign of whether this truly is virus or not, because if it's got a virus, it's highly likely those blooms will be malformed and possibly have streaks all over them that shouldn't be there. Um, I need to uh, stake those spikes a bit better as well. Next time I water, get some more clips on them, get them a bit more upright. But we've got those to come. And oh, I'm glad I got down there, even though that hurt my knees, because if I hadn't got down there, I wouldn't have seen that. Now, I hadn't noticed that last time I watered it. So we have some buds on this. <coughs> and this one is a bit of a quandary because I'm not 100% certain what it is. But I'm 95% certain what it is. There was a bit of a muddle with things coming off of um, uh, mounts and going in pots and some not coming off mounts, none of them which of which had tags, but I'm reasonably certain I know what that is, in which case we're in for a bit of a treat when that blooms. Hope they don't blast. Right, coming over here, nothing much going on here apart from the Tahitian Dancer, which has got two spikes. Um, the buds are starting to swell and show their colour. The, these are a nice, they're not a deep purple, but they are a purple, not pink. So they have got, you know, they're a nice shade, little splash of yellow. Looking forward to that. And um, that's got a lot of sotoanum in it. I think it's about 50% sotoanum, so it's fragrant as well. Um, that's that. And then nothing up on this shelf a lot of these are rescues anyway <laughs> seeing a new growth or a new leaf on one of those would be good <laughs> let alone a spike um, in amongst these down here we've got this Mazda Valia bud pushing on that should open soon and there's another one here now this is the same plant that's the main plant this was a division when I repotted so they're both the same but we've got a bud coming here as well and then tucked in behind it, them, that little tiny, let me get this out of the way a bit, that little tiny Paphiopedalum's got a bud. Um, it is a miniature, so, you know, it's not going to be a giant bloom, um, but it's beautiful colours um, from the pictures I've seen. So we shall see what happens with that. Uh, that's all over here. And then we come round to Cymbidium World again. And we've got the nice yellow hybrid that's doing well. I did notice down here, when you see the lip changing colour like that, that normally means that bloom's going to go. I know, I can't remember whether that was the first one to open. But um, this has got um, more spikes on it. Um, they're a bit behind the ones that have opened, but there's a nice spike here too and there's another one somewhere so we should get a succession of blooms but I think we're going to have a gap because these spikes will go over long before those others open so uh, we'll have like a second flush which is good <coughs> and then we've got the uh, <laughs> the cymbidium <coughs> oh, excuse my throat just will not get better <coughs> the cymbidium copper saga um, I am now confident that both of these are not different. They are one and the same plant. They were in the same pot, and I believe they are the same plant, and they are both Cymbidium copper. And it's one that is very sensitive to light, stroke heat, stroke feed. Pick any one or all three of those, and they are, they've had an effect on this plant. Now I can deal with the feed no problem because the plant got next to no feed last year in the growing season. Well we can fix that, that's easy. Possibly didn't get enough light and can do with a bit of sun on it. Morning sun, I can fix that. And a little, just uh, what will happen with the cymbidiums. If you have a look at my, that bonsai staging there, 
you can see it's a double shelf yeah it's got a low shelf and a high shelf and it's it's a reasonable size bit of staging now I've got another one of those in the carport that hasn't even been put together yet my plan is to put that one together and stain it black to match the other staging in the garden which is all for the bonsai at the moment and put some casters on it that way when the when the cymbidiums are outside they'll be on this paved area but they can be moved to get that morning sun on wheels and then moved out of that morning sun when the sun starts getting a bit too warm for them a bit too strong so they'll be movable without having to lift so that's my plan for making the cymbidiums get more of the lights that you know that can do them some good morning sun so that's the plan not there yet <laughs> Right now at the top here, there's nothing going on, but then there is because my little miniature cymbidium spike is pushing on nicely. And it looks like we're going to get more blooms that were, than were on it last time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight blooms this time round. Mind you, when last time round it was somebody else's spike. You know, it was in bloom when I bought it. Um, and that would have been February last year at the uh, that was at the Bournemouth show Ridlington school were there which is where it came from um, but yeah so that's going to be a nice blooming and hopefully that will be in bloom for our show in March because last year that sat on the table on the door with me and attracted an awful lot of attention as people were coming in and paying to come into the show this was the first orchid they saw and it, you know it attracted a lot of attention um, so we may do that again providing it's in bloom by then of course now down here we've got hibiki all the blooms in the center of the plant have gone now so that part's finished blooming but we still have some blooms here and I can't get any closer with the camera but we do have a zoom which I keep forgetting I've got so we can get in and have a closer look at those. I keep forgetting to, you know, I've got the zoom. I can't get the camera any closer because there's leaves and other blooms in the way. <laughs> so uh, that's that. And um, let me zoom out again. And then next to it, we've got this um, Odontoglossum type. Um, again, pop-ups with the names. Although this one's tiger tail, I know what it is. These blooms are going to be gone very soon. They are on their last legs if you come up this end where the first blooms opened you can see so that spike needs to come off soon give the plant a rest and give the new growths chance to push on <clears throat> now the cymbidiums down on this lower floor I'm not going to get them out but two of them have spikes and one of them doesn't <laughs> well, I can't I can't I'm not going to get them out um, my infundibulum is doing quite well um, apart from losing the top of the latest um, latest cane which actually broke off it should in theory trigger a new growth at the base but it hasn't happened yet now these are the latest two blooms um, they're lovely large blooms in fundibulum gorgeous color in the center and then over on this cane over here we've got an odd bud here coming out and then over here we've got a set of three which is it's a little unusual to get a set of three they normally come in twos ones and twos but um yeah so we've got some more blooms to come so there'll be a bit of a succession there they last for absolutely ages anyway so that's good um coming over here we've got this paphiopedalum that is, I was hoping this would be open for today, but it isn't quite. It's nearly there. <laughs> um, I can't remember whether that was in bloom when I got it or not. I don't think it was. I think that will be a first time bloom for me. So that will be good. And then the other Paphiopedalum bloom that we've got is going over. So this one's nearly finished now. See the top is very floppy. So that's only, that'll probably be gone tomorrow. So that's the end of that one. And then... Uh, <clears throat> we have a new growth on the plant so it's a matter of pushing that one on you know and then hopefully that one will come up and bloom now this um, large um, cylogeny here 
The new growths are this one, and you can see that has already bloomed. This one has already bloomed. This one has already bloomed. And this one isn't going to. <laughs> if, a, if you get this, this type that pushes the spike out of the growth, um, and it suppresses the leaves while the blooms are there, and then as the blooms fade, the leaves start to progress and then the bulb forms. That's its sequence of events. But if you see the leaves pushing on and there's no spike, then there won't be one. So this is going to be a blind growth. Nonetheless, it's a nice strong growth and it will put strength back into the plant. So that's four new bulbs on that plant that will produce roots and make that a pretty strong plant. Now how many new growths we get next time round I don't know but I would guess it should be at least four and maybe we can get all four of them to bloom next time round. So that's that and then we've got the um, Oncidium with the six spikes. They're not my spikes, I'm not taking credit for them. It, it had the spikes on them when I bought it. They've just grown on and developed flipping white fly on this one which is um, as the aphids go white fly can be quite troublesome because they're small um, where can you see them best you probably see them best on that leaf yeah where they've fallen off the blooms um, because they're really tiny they don't appear to be doing much damage and quite honestly compared with some other aphids they're not doing that much damage um, but they are one of the few aphids that are very prone to becoming resistant to sprays so they're they're one of those that whatever you use to get rid of them needs to work and totally get rid of them otherwise they can become resistant and if they get in really large numbers they can cause problems the green ones the bigger ones i just squash them as i see them but these little white ones are a bit of a nuisance they were on a previous oncidium that I believe I bought them in on that plant and they only live in this area so they only seem to get on plants in this area so they should be easy to deal with and at the moment they're only on this plant with very very few but a couple on these because this was over here so it got them over here but that spikes gonna come off so that will get rid of them on that plant um, Obviously there's still buds to open over here, so I won't be cutting these spikes off. <laughs> but I might have to spray them nonetheless. Not a good time of year to be spraying at the moment. Oh, I forgot to tell you. We had some snow. <laughs> it's melting, but um, yeah, we had some snow last night. A dusting, no more than a dusting. And um, it only settled on the shed roof, a bit of the decking and on the tabletop there. Um, you just see it on the edge of the table there. Um, but it, it was literally just a dusting, nothing to, uh, nothing to worry about. But it was cold last night um, and it's very cold today. I suspect outside, I went outside earlier on, probably only three or four degrees out there, despite the sun being out. We've now got a northeasterly wind so the wind's coming from that direction for a change. You can see the clouds moving towards us, where normally they're moving away from us. So it's a complete 180 degree turnaround of the wind, which means we're getting, you know, air from right up north, basically. It's cold. <laughs> and this house don't heat up very well. I had the heating on all day yesterday in the house. Now, the house would have got warmer and better if I'd had the conservatory door shut, obviously. But, you know, I sort of think, well, I'd still have had the heating on in the house anyway. And if I'd shut the conservatory door, the heater out here would have been cutting in and out all day as well. So I sort of think I'm actually making a bit of a saving by sacrificing a little bit of the house heat to help keep this warmer during the day. It's only during daylight hours, so, uh, which are relatively short at the moment. But um, rate of change of daylight hours is starting to increase. So my plan is to reintroduce the lights 
probably about the second week of February, so in a month's time, something like that. We'll be introducing the lights to increase the day length a bit at a time to get it back up to 12 hours much earlier than waiting for Mother Nature to do it. And I'll be increasing the heat to go with that light during the daytime, not the night, just the day, to try and encourage things to come back into growth. Right, and last but not least, we've got the Vanda with its um, very attractive blooms that are half the size they should be for this plant, literally. These, these blooms used to be nearly as big as my hand. They're tiny this time round and only three matured. Um, not sure this other one's going to open. No, it's broken, it's rotted. So we've just got the three. So a very poor spike on a plant that's not doing that well, which I will be doing something about, but not right now. Waiting for better temperatures to, to do what I need to do with this. <coughs> Oh, my throat. <coughs> it's just constantly gruff. <laughs> anyway, so that's everything in bloom. Chat about some of the other stuff. <coughs> and, um, yes, there'll be a gardening video um, soon. I won't say which day. It might be tomorrow. It might be the day after. It depends how I get on with my watering today and whether it spills over into tomorrow. Um, but I'm going to film the... Um, the, the planted border. We've got lots of lots of greenery poking up and um, some stuff to have a look at. So uh, I'll be doing a, a garden update in the near future, next day or two. And as for the filming of the rest of the week on the Orchid channel, um, the only thing I can definitely say at the moment is tomorrow will be one of the viewers requested videos. After that, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't planned that far ahead yet. Right. Anyway, thanks for dropping by. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Um, I keep forgetting to say with the subscriptions, the word is a bad choice of word. Subscription implies parting with money. Subscribing to a channel is totally free. Yeah? It just helps with the channel growth. It's there is no money involved with subscribing to a channel. You just click on the um, you know, subscribe thing and, um, and, and it does it. The only choice you get after that is whether you choose to have notifications on or off. Um, if you have them on, then every time that channel posts a video, you'll get an email. Um, which if, like on your phone, you're permanently logged into your mail, um, you'll get a little bing bong saying so-and-so's posted a, you know, posted a video um, but that, that's the choice um, but the notification function is totally free it's not like membership which is a, a donation feature so uh, yeah so no reason not to <laughs> really you know when you're watching the channel on a regular basis there's no reason not to subscribe if you don't want other people to know you've subscribed you can turn that off as well you can make your subscriptions private in the settings so nobody knows you've done it, including the channel owner. So, you know, there are various things you can do. And in addition to that, don't forget the old thumbs up. <laughs> Again, that's free and it helps the channel. But the thing that probably helps the channel more than anything is the thing you've just done. It's called watching the videos. That's the good bit. See you next time. Thanks for dropping by.